Wi-Fi. But this is what it would look like to install. Um, you basically would say Laravel new app, like you're used to, and then just Spark has its own command line tool as well. You can just say Spark install, and it will pull down everything that you need to get started, and pretty much you just pull up your app in Homestead and you're ready to go. Does anyone know what Defiant comes from? Star Trek. Okay, so, uh, all right, let me get out of Keynote and we'll pull up Chrome. Let me see, I need to go ahead and mirror my display, so just bear with me for just a second while I do that. All righty, um, let me go to Chrome. I've got a little checklist here so I don't forget anything I want to show you. Um, when you first install Spark, it actually does give you like a splash page, so this is kind of the home page you would see. You can export all of these views into your resources views vendor directory, so you can customize this, you can rid this out entirely um, to customize it for your business, uh, which is probably what you're going to do, especially for the splash page. Um, just customize that, but it gives you something to look at while you're hacking on your project. You can swap out some of these features. It just talks a little bit about Spark out of the box, but you would change this to be about the features of your app that you're launching. It gives you a pricing table out of the box um, that you can tweak, and I'll show you how to customize that, and of course just some, some testimonials. But like I said, this is something you can customize however you want. This isn't like something permanent that you would necessarily keep in your app. Now, what's interesting is how these plans are uh, defined is I have a, let's pull this up, this installs a Spark service provider. Let me make this nice and big for you. And there's a customized subscription plans where I'm just really fluently defining these plans. Um, and it's hooked up to Stripe, of course, because it uses Cashier. But I can define a free plan. I can define my basic plan and my trial days and my features. And that's what's feeding into this pricing table you know, where it's getting that feature of one, two, three. So you can just define that right in your code and you can mark plans as hidden or whatever and it will just generate that for you kind of intelligently. And if you don't like the way it does that, just, just change that HTML. Um, all the back-end logic, you know, is not going to care, of course. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to the registration page. Of course, this is all just scaffolded for you. Um, if I have subscriptions, I'm going to be automatically prompted to select my plan. So I don't really have to worry about coding all that. I can go ahead and select a plan. And that's going to take me to the, you know, the actual registration screen where I can type in my information. I can go back and change plans, so it's really simple to, you know, uh, I try to make every uh, little detail kind of easy for your users to really think about what the flow is going to be. Now, let me show you one thing while I'm in here. Let's say you have monthly and yearly plans. I actually have a yearly plan right here that I'm just going to uncomment. So I have like a $100 yearly plan. It's a pretty common scenario. If I refresh this, I get a nice monthly yearly switcher where my users can see my yearly plans and my monthly plans, and that's all ready to go out of the box. You can tweak it. We have SAS files. You can just override styles that you want and make it look however you like. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and make an account on the basic plan. I've uh, done this registration form a few times over the past few months. <laughs> This in. I'll use the Stripe test credit card number. All right, and uh, go ahead and begin my seven-day trial. This was a little. This was taken a few seconds on this internet, but uh, it has to hit Stripe to actually create this plan. Okay, that wasn't too bad. So now I'm in. I've made my plan. I'm subscribed to this application, and this is just a dashboard. You would, of course, this is where your dashboard would be for your app. You could. Make this however you want. This is just a, a view that you can customize. You customize the route, pass in whatever data you want. You know, it's all in your hands from this point, basically. And Spark is kind of done as far as, as that's concerned. Now, there is a little more to Spark because, you know, that's, that's great, but there's a little bit more that goes into bootstrapping an application. So uh, let's go ahead and head into the settings page. And it, it gives me these links out of the box. So I can go into my settings. And I've made an account, so I'm now in my account dashboard, and I can customize these tabs however I want. I can add fields, of course, which I'll definitely need to add some fields to this profile to gain whatever information is relevant for my app. And, of course, I can change this. This is all set up. I can hit these routes. I can update my information. It's all dropped in and ready to go uh, for me to just get started. So I can change this information. 
Now, if I go to security, of course, I can do the usual stuff. I can update my password, um, you know, with the usual flow of typing in my current, new, and then confirm my new password. Two-factor authentication is ready to go, out of the box. So what I, I can just go ahead and get started. I can do my phone number. Don't want to prank call me or anything. Go ahead and enable my two-factor authentication. I've actually got this on my phone. So if I log out and then go to log back in, let's see here. I should be presented with my two-factor, and I have my code right here on the podium, and I can verify and log in. So it's just that easy to drop in two-factor authentication. Go ahead and turn that off. Um, so that's the security tab, just basic stuff, you know, to get you started. If you want to supplement that, it's, uh, it's really easy to add more stuff. Now the subscription tab is kind of a beast. This is a lot goes into managing subscriptions. Um, and if you've ever built a product, you know you, you probably felt like you spent about 80% of your time just doing this stuff and not working on your real app. So of course you can change your plan. And by default we have this nice thing where you can see the features of every plan based on your service provider. So y'all can go ahead and switch to the pro plan. And that's gonna take care of you know prorating the uh, bill for the next billing cycle. All the usual cashier stuff that you would write by hand. It's all just going to be done automatically, and uh, if you want to override it, you can do that. We raise events, so we let you hook into a lot of custom stuff, like when a user registered, when a user changes their plan. It's really easy to kind of hook into and make it your own, but we sort of give you a good uh, starting point. I can update my credit card. I don't need to walk through that with you. That's pretty standard. Uh, I can add extra billing information that I want to add uh, to my, maybe my invoice, maybe my company name or something like that. And then I already have my invoice listing. This is already coded. So I can go ahead and download an invoice, which my first one is zero because I'm on a trial. We still, uh, still generates an invoice even though you're on a trial. Um, and you can see this extra company information is right there in the invoice. So it's all ready to go. I can, you know, if I'm not satisfied, I can cancel my subscription. That's going to hit strike, cancel. It's going to leave them on the grace period, so they, they've paid for a month, so you want to let them keep using it until the end of the month. So that's a tricky bit of logic you have to handle. Um, so it's telling them your subscription's been canceled. You can continue to use it until August 18th, um, and you can resume your subscription, of course, at no cost until the end of the billing period, which I can go ahead and resume that. That's all ready to go, and everything should pretty much be back to how it was. All right, so... That sort of lets me manage all that basic subscription stuff. Um, if you have coupons, which is kind of subscription related, let me log out and go to that register screen. So a lot of times you might want to send someone like a promo code um, if you have a friend that you want to let sign up at a discount. So I can actually just send them a link. And if I've created a coupon on Stripe called Test One, if I send that to them, see how the pricing table just automatically reads that off of Stripe and it gives them a nice updated view that, hey, you get $9 for the first month or 18 for the first month. So this is looks like a 10% discount. Um, if it's a little bit of a different coupon, like maybe a lifetime coupon, it's actually going to be intelligent enough to just cross out that price and say, you get $9 monthly for life. We're very careful about the wording here to make sure that we're not, uh, you know, it's not kind of false advertising. Um, or 18 for life. Um, if it's sort of a duration, you can say it's $9 monthly for the first six months. So whatever you define in Stripe, it's just going to read it and um, display it how it should be. You don't really have to worry about any of that. Um, say I have like a site-wide promotion. So I'm on the register screen and I want like everyone for this one day to receive a coupon. In my Spark service provider, let's just go up to the boot method. Let's just say I want to run a Spark promotion for that, that test one, that coupon that I showed you earlier. Um, so everyone's first bill I think should be 10% off. And now if I hit this route, you can see everyone's going to get that coupon. So it's really easy to run um, sort of a special, whatever it is, Cyber Wednesday or Black Friday sale uh, for your app. And this is sort of, this is one thing that's really easy to neglect. I've neglected, on, neglected it on basically every app I've ever written. It's always something that you kind of forget about and have to bake in later. So it's nice just to have coupons and promotions ready to go because it's really nice when you first launch the app to have some kind of mechanism for doing that. Okay, let me go ahead and log back in, show you a couple more things. All right, so we've covered basic profiles, subscriptions, uh, security stuff. 
Let's go ahead and look at one more layer. What if you have teams? Um, this is something that Forge has. We have that concept of circles where people can kind of join your circle and collaborate on your servers. Envoy has this. Um, lots of applications have this. Bugsnag, Basecamp. What we can do, actually I go to my settings here. Let's go to our, our user model. And let's just say we want this user, they can join teams. We just add that trait, kind of like our other authenticatable stuff. Now you'll see I get a Teams tab on this settings screen. When I go into this, I can go ahead and create a, a couple teams. Let me make two teams. Um, first team and second team. Now check out my nav bar. It looks a little bit different. If I drop it down, I have options to create a new team or I can switch between teams. So like if you've ever used uh, um, Bugsnag, for example, I might be viewing my, my Forge errors in Bugsnag and then I can switch over to like my other company. Maybe I have my side project as one and my day job is the other and I'm on both of those teams and I want to switch between which one I'm viewing the application for. So this lets you do that. So if I click second team, you can see now I'm on the second team. That's my current team. So it has a little check mark next to it. Or I can hit create a new team and it's going to take me to my settings so I can make a new team. And you can kind of lock down, like if you want, say they're on a certain plan, and so you want to hook a validation hook in there to say they can only create five teams, it's really easy to do that. Now if I go into my team settings, if I'm the owner, of course I have some basic information, and again, you can supplement this with whatever you want just by editing the HTML. You don't have to go use like any funky PHP syntax to do this. You just edit the HTML right there. Um, of course, I can change the team name, but this is this is really nice. I can send invitations to other people to join my team. So let's just say I invite uh, Ian at userscape.com to join my team, and I'm going to fire that off. Okay, he's got a pending invitation. Now I can cancel it and make sure he gets it here. And if I look in this inbox, you can see that it actually has the email scaffolded it out, ready for you to go. Uh, so it says I've invited him to this team. If you don't already have an account, click the following link to get started. So let me go ahead and copy that link. I'll fire up a new browser here. Now when I hit this, it's smart enough to know that I don't want to show him the register page because he has an invitation. And I want to acknowledge that he has an invitation by saying, you know, we found your invitation from Taylor Rodwell. He invited you to the first team. team. Um, and he can go ahead and sign up. He's actually not prompted for any billing information here. Um, so it, it's a really nice flow. Um, and it all seems kind of simple and straightforward, but when you actually sit down to write all this stuff, it takes longer than you think. Um, so I can go ahead and register, and he's in. So if I look at his teams, you know, he's already attached to my team. He's ready to go. And if I go back to the owner's, owner's side, now if I view the membership, of course, I, he's shown as a current team member. His, his invitation has been accepted, and um, he can start using the app. And I can remove him if I want to, you know, sort of an admin functionality. Okay, so uh, that's really the gist of Spark. Um, it's sort of a, a foundation for building SaaS apps, subscription SaaS apps, and I think it could really save you a lot of time. I know it's going to save me a lot of time. And so the next time you have that next big idea, this can help you get started. You can start hacking on your idea. So if you have an idea one night, start on it the next morning. You've already got subscriptions. You've already got authentication. You've already got team management, and you're ready to just start coding on your app. You know, sit down and and start hacking at it. Um, so hopefully this will save you some time. What do you think?